Hi, I'm Sportster Paul. We're here with SolidWorks Cam. It's a free package in SolidWorks 2018-20. to 20. Uh, We're playing around with it. We've done a few previous videos you can go check out. In this video, we're going to try to add holes to this test part. A test part that was made by a buddy in California, Dave Rui, mechanical engineer, industrial designer, machinist. He does it all, so he's done some clever things that he knows will screw up these automatic feature recognition cam programs. So let's get up here. Alrighty, here's the file. Now this is the file, Rui, that's his last name, test part writable. This is the way I left it in the episode one of the test part video. So, you know, the first thing you want to do is save as, which should really be called rename with trash file left over in SolidWorks. You really say save as a copy and open. And so you can see how many times I've been practicing this. Take six. Um, episode two. Do I just have an episode? Yeah, because this, this will hopefully be the real one dot solid part save make sure keep the original close the original document come up here hover and make sure you know what you're writing to because it's boy it's easy to get confused here's the part when uh, SolidWorks cam is the same as cam works except they don't cam works doesn't give a free package they do it through SolidWorks you pay two. the problem with the the free one is when you stop paying your SolidWorks maintenance this breaks so it's kind of like an advertisement more than a functioning thing for me. I, I don't know how long I'll be able to pay maintenance in these troubled times. So for two and a half, three grand, including maintenance, you can get SolidWorks Cam Professional, which I believe is perpetual license. They say it got me volume mill, but I see volume mill stuff we'll play with here. Volume mill is a high speed machining, rapid tool path kind of thing, constant tool pressures. Uh, and then for 5,500 plus 15 maintenance, you can get Camworks Mill. That's a full 3D package. These are two and a half D, but you'll see. And that's one of the things that's going to screw us up, right? It's got this ramp here. We got to deal with that later. Now, all we want to do is drill these five holes in the bottom. When this thing did automatic feature recognition, that's what all these cam programs, oh, it's automatic. It made, let's go over, here's the three tabs that get added when you go, you know, SolidWorks, Tools, Add-ins, Cam. You get this, which is the feature tree that shows you the features. This is the operation tree, so mills and center drills and face facing, all of that stuff. Here's the tools. Blue tools aren't used, black tools are used. So, the uh, problem with the pocket, they were in the wrong order, so it was doing the lower pocket first. And it would only do this pocket up to this level down here, so it wouldn't start. So it, it classified it with automatic as an irregular slot. I'm like, I don't know what an irregular slot is. I know what a pot. To me, a slot means that there's material on both sides of the end mill, and that's what's real hard on the end mill. Can't get the chips out as easy. And an irregular slot would be one that made like a dog leg, but is still only as wide as the tool. I tried to edit that to just move the top of it up to this surface. It ended up carving out over here, over here. I'm sure it's user error. I gave up, erased it, and made a pocket feature, which it has labeled a regular pocket. And now it's the way I want. It, it starts up at the top, goes down to the top of this little plateau Dave put in here. He's so smart. He knew exactly what would chew up a cam package. Then the regular pocket, here the problem was it went through this blind hole, and this, uh, I'm sorry, not blind, breakout hole, and this breakout hole. And so I had to make a sketch, which you can still see, like here, these centers here. That's a sketch I made so that it could follow here and fix all that. So kind of tedious. None of the automatic stuff has been working for me. Not in the first part, the first impression, second impression, third impression part. Not in this one. I made a little test part for my mill, uh, Avid Benchtop Pro. It, uh, it did goofy things on, uh, this is an ellipse, admittedly kind of weird, but that's what I wanted to see. It did like 20 little feeds here. We'll look at that again. I'll get into this part and show you, which will be good to show exactly how you set things up. For now, let's go back here. Here's, I called it the Cam Clued sketch. So this was the sketch I made to get it to do that bottom pocket. And all we want to do is hide it. There's no need to look at those little dots and confuse us. Go back here. 
Okay. So the first problem that it's not a problem. It's something they, they did this real quick. It took them minutes, he said, to do this. And so for stock, he didn't use the bounding box because that doesn't teach you anything. He put like five thousandths on the top and a little on the side. But watch, I'll double click stock manager. And it'll say. I found out half of my problems not being able to see stuff is because I got this command manager. When you get rid of that big ribbon, you can now see the dialog boxes the way people designed them here. <clears throat> stock size. Nobody orders 4.12. Send me a block of 4.12. You know, that's ridiculous. So I learned tediously, I got to go 25, 25. See, they don't let you pick the stock size and say put the part in the middle of it. And this is a shortcoming for such a sophisticated package. And then here, I think I went 0.1. And then here I went 0.4. Why is it? Oh, OK, it's obviously confused. Point one and go up a little more in the bottom direction there. So it's now it's a, a normal stock size stock size that you can order online. I like Midwest metals. There's a ton of them, you know, uh, four point five by three point five by two point five. I can order, you know, one or ten of those. And here's something while I've been playing with this. I'm, I'm trying to find all the gotchas. This isn't a demo to show you how wonderful this is showing you how a new user, a non machinist, I'm an engineer, how you get all screwed up. OK, two five. Let's make this. 2.51. You don't see it. If we made it, I don't know what would happen if we say a nine here now. You don't see. Oh, no, I'll round it up. OK, so let's say four. Two. Oh boy, I can't keep my train of thought. 2.54. So let's say OK. And let's go tools. Scroll bar doesn't work here. You got you got to go these goofy little things and it doesn't show up at first. So you got to know this little triangle means they're hiding stuff. All this window space and they can't. It's a document property. It's the units and they've changed this from the old 2005 I'm used to. Most machinists I know like four significant digits. OK, now let's go back to we're still in the feature tree. Let's go back to our stock manager. Notice. Now it lets you see that we added that. And so that's a, a warning to be careful. It, it, it erases trailing zeros, which I guess is OK. But. Oh, OK, I made a big mistake here. Point one. And down one here. See how easy it is to get. OK, now the stock size is where you want it. So that's a good trick. Say OK. Hover over it. Yeah, that's the new stock. Now watch how it screws you up. This face fe face feature was made with the old stock. You don't see it. And, and if you go look at the tools face mill, you see there's just one line, meaning it goes down and does its thing because there's only like 50,000. There's you know, some tiny little amount of material there. It only needed to do one pass. Now it's not doing your design intent. You've changed the stock, but it hasn't automatically updated. I found to do that. You go to face feature. Double click on it. Ah, see, it immediately got smarter. It made the whole face. That's the other problem is it doesn't really know how big the face is on the sides, much less how deep it has to go. You can't get out of it yet because it's a puzzle. You say end condition and it's all having you know, finish up to stock. All that was OK. And now it knows where the new stock is. It does show you the tool diameter, two inch face mill, which I can't use in my Avid router, but that's OK. And so without doing anything, you can just close it. Now, when you know, let's see if it's smart enough. Ah, already it's smart enough. I didn't have to go uh, generate operation plan. See how there's two there. So now it's doing its technology database speeds and feeds and loads and, and forwards and doing all the cool stuff you want it to do. That's a little trick. Uh, something else. I constantly getting confused between the feature tab and the operations tab. They can look very similar, right? Oh, group one appears in the operations tab. That's good to know. Otherwise, it's indistinguishable. So setup is where you put it in the vice. So if you got to put the 
flip the part over, do it from the bottom, that are going to be two setups. If you got to do every side, it's six setups. If you got angles to do, more setups. Uh, one of the things I like to do, okay, let's go to features, which is kind of the higher level, middle part setup, because it's so easy to get confused, top setup. I do when I design parts, I do a lot of typing and it's smart enough. When you go to the operations, it's changed to top setup. Now, one of the things that bothered me, what was OK, when you just you right click over top setup here, it gives you some stuff. It'll do a part pruner. So then when you're over here in the operations, top setup. Oh, wait a minute. Where was that perimeter? I want to do a perimeter. So these are the kind of things that have been screwing me up. You know, where the heck am I? I'm an intermittent user. I'm a prototype person, right? I'm not going to use this eight hours a day, 20, you know, five days a week for the rest of my life. So I know this now because I've been just intense on this for four or five days. But that was a, a, a pain in the butt. OK, let's do the drills. We just want to do these five drill holes. When it did it automatically for Dave, it did these two clear holes you can see from the top. You can see this from the top. You see that one. It did them from the top as though you you do all those tool changes only to flip the part over. Oops, sorry, flip the part over and do the three remaining from the bottom. Duh. This is the promise of automatic when computers try to do your thinking, but not your work. OK, we well, want the work done. So once again, features, you got to always get in this mode. Where am I? Top setup. I think you can highlight here and say mill part setup. Front plane would be OK. See, the little red arrow is the important thing. It's it's going to mill coming down when it does simulations. You'll see the tools coming down, but that's really not the reference surface. I'm not sure I might be causing more problems when I select this face and you can see that under. No, you can't see it under there. Oh, do you see it right here? That's they put it up top so you can see it. It might cause problems when I go to I have to origin the mill. You know, after you flip it over, you got to find locate that part in space in the vice where it is now. So, you know, there's coordinate systems and stuff that I've forgotten how I did when I made this little sample part. Hopefully we'll remember. So we've redefined it. Mill part setup three because can't keep track of where it is. We'll say bottom setup. OK, good. And now we got a bottom setup. Now, I know for a fact if I try to drill the holes without facing all that material off, it's going to crash. It's going to run the center drills down and hit that material and, and it's brilliant program. It says, hey, you just crashed the center drill. So because I've been here practicing and practicing, I want to add in the features tab, bottom setup. It would let me do a perimeter, but we don't have to. Automatically, it puts one in that you don't need. You get to erase that two and a half axis feature. Oh, it's already set face feature. Just pick this now is where it hides the important thing face down. That's because this ribbon this stupid command manager ribbon, which helps you when you're learning. But, you know, you want it. You want these dialog boxes to be proper. Still won't let you get out. Doesn't give you a green box because you haven't done end condition. But you can see by where I put the purple. It's smart enough to know it just happened to be oh strategy finish. Finish islands. Well, I guess you're just going to finish this. Uh, say yes. You can now say generate operation plan. It hops you automatically over to here. Then whether you go say generate toolpath up here, generate toolpath. There it is. Same kind of thing you can see is that big face mill, which I'm going to have to change because my machine doesn't have enough torque to do a two, three inch. What is it? Two, two inch face mill. But I just want to show you the principles for now. OK, so we did that. Now I'll show you the wrong way to make holes cause me hours of frustration. Uh, OK, see how it's saying well, rough contour. Oh, wait a minute. It, what's going on? Oh, see, wrong tab because they hop you automatically. You kind of forget where you're at. So I'm, you know, I'm never sure what order or where it's going to put stuff Two and a half axis feature. I want holes. Now, if you select face, it's not smart to say, oh, let's do all the holes on that face. But that's OK. That's not a killer. So here's my mistake. I selected the surfaces. Let me show you. Because that ribbon you can't see. See, it's saying face, face, face. Bear with me here. And then you got because of the ribbon taking up so much space. Then you say end condition. It's wrong here for it picks this blind, which if you see the part, find a good one. Here's a good one. See, it's going 
a little too deep. I had to actually get out of this whole thing, go back to the part, look up how Dave, how Dave, deep made, Dave made the holes. He made them 38. I tried, here, I'll show you. Oh, how about a vertex? Can I do a vertex? Pick this vertex right there. Oh, there it is. Bam, makes them too deep. I tried picking a surface. Oh, how about that conical surface up to face? How about this face? No, it won't do that. You end up going back to blind, looking up, and typing in 3, 8. Now you can see it's mathematically correct. Okay? So, there you go. Notice it broke the holes apart. There were five holes. For some reason, it's decided this whole group is a drill, this whole group is a drill. And we're shit. Double click on it. Oh, no. No, no, we're still in features. Not the end of the world. Double click. You go in condition. No, I don't want to just drill this. I want to thread this. And it'll warn you it's going to screw up. Look at this. This isn't a quarter 20 tap. This is a metric tap, I'm pretty sure. We'll say, okay. MC tap cutting. Six by one. Doesn't that sound like a metric tap? Why it did this, I don't... Well, I'll show you how to fix it. Here, the same thing, double click. There's a way to go in. I, I should have done this. Now you get this dialog box, which I have to open and close off screen. This is where you say thread. Go and close it. Okay. And it's smart enough to make it total misery. I will save you all the misery it took. Yes, delete it. Yes, delete it. Recycle bin, empty, yes. Now go bottom side, right clicked here. Let's see if it works again. Wait, am I in the right thing? Yes, two and a half, not an operation, a feature, a hole. Pick them. This time I picked them in a more counterclockwise edge. Made sure I got an edge. Made sure I got an edge. Oops, missed it. Hope that doesn't screw things up. Make sure I got an edge. Make sure I got an edge. Okay, they're all edges. Go up here, end condition. I don't want to just drill them. I want to drill would get you, see it shows you drill. So center drill, be nice if it is center drill, drill. Okay, if you go here and say, no, I want a thread. Now it shows you, and it says quarter 20. So I have high hopes that this time it won't screw up. Why it's doing it one time and not the other, I don't know. Blind, we know it's 0.38. See what happens. Now it acted right. Okay, so here's your five holes. Oops, I accidentally. This is the dialog. That's the other thing. If I tried to do. This is the dialog box. If you double click on this, I got to pull them always off. Okay. See, so double click on hole group. You get this. I looked and looked. Oh, this is kind of cool strategy. I can do quarter twenty. I can change stuff. That's handy. I looked and looked. Where is it? And that's, let me say, okay, that's because I'd be down here and I double click. No, it's still, uh, see, I'm already confused. Or maybe I was over here and double clicking. It's just uh, you're hunting. It's dialog box dizzy. Okay. Generate operation plan. Done. It's jumped us over here. Bottom setup. Generate tool paths. Done. So instead of, you know, I suffered for hours this morning because, oh, it does three different center drills in different places. It does center drill, drill tap. Then it did once it made two separate holes and a group of three because that make that I could kind of see because it's got three blind holes and two breakout holes. And so there it would do center drill, drill tap once for one hole, center drill, drill tap for another. Then the whole group where it did center drill for the three uh, drill for the three, tap for the three, and bless their heart, he, over here, you can actually drag them around. So when there were these multiples, you could move them around. See, now it just has whole group there. So you think we're done, but we're not. A lot of time, right? A lot of struggling. Of course, I'm new. I haven't had training. I refuse. I don't think you need that much training to be productive. I don't think you should. Of course, this is a very sophisticated program. So it's about time to save, isn't it? We've all been burned by that. Save. <clears throat> now simulate. Or no, that's, I always do the wrong stuff. These are the tools it's picked. Oh, oh, I want to show you guys something. See the center drill? If you, I actually have a magnifying glass. Like, like, 
Can I show it? This text right here. I just have no idea why they decide. There it is. I, I can't read that. Even if I get close to the screen, well, I guess I can't barely make it out. Keep the magnifying glass. Happen. Same thing. What's this little yellow? Oh, that's an. So you go here, you say what's wrong. The tool selected was not from the tool crib. Okay, well, you're the one who selected it. Clearing this error will clear the status of all the operation nodes using this tool. Clear. Good. I guess they just wanted to bother us to show they care. Now, I always generate tool paths again, just in case. Now we'll do our simulation. I've learned, rather than making you sit through it, it's going to go to the end and down here instead of saying one move at a time. Now just go to the end. Tell me what happens. Buzz, wait a minute. The center drill between the tool and the stock. Oh, I should show you that. Up here, I used to just have pause on collision. You always need that because if you have the face mill after you do the center drills, it'll crash, but the part will look okay when you're done. You won't realize that you crashed that drill. Well, like I said, before you send something to the mill, you better have all these turned on. This is the shank collision. Mostly for like for end mills, you're not supposed to run the smooth shank part of it up against the part as you spin. That'll get chips in there, break a tool. They make some tools where that shank is cut down or you get longer flutes. And this one is the tool holder. And you'll see like on that impression part, I was bombing the tool holder in. So I turned all those on. So now you can see all that. Now I'm getting the shank of the center drill. So now I'm going to hit enter and oops, enter, enter. OK, we're done. And now you can see it's got it's got the tap in there rather than making you sit through watching the pretty animation. Everybody, all the managers like to show off. This took a while. Say, OK, OK. Thankfully, we don't have three or four of them like when this thing was blowing up on me. Center drill. Here's the problem. So like always, double click on it. It opens this dialog box. I have to open it off screen because of this Windows problem I got. If I close it on this on this monitor, it will disappear and go on a non-existent monitor. And I got to go find it. The worst thing about this is you say preview. Showing the tool. Let's see if we can demonstrate where it's going wrong. Oops, come up. I did reverse the way the zoom wheel works in See, you, assuming this green is the feed, you put it right there and you see the shank of the tool is just mathematically touching, not the stock, but well, and that's not the stock. This thing is just the part. See, we're going down there. It's plunging a little too deep. Then here's the trick. See, it, it didn't dismiss that box. It's still up here clicking on anything. Oh, now it works. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. There is a tool. Good to know. Let's get it out of the way so you can. Is this good to see? Because I know my, my picture, my, my face is headshots there. All right, so the tool doesn't care. FS means feeds or speeds. That's not really it. NC, I had high hopes for NC because it means numeric control should be toolpath. No. Feature options, more indecipherable. They love their dialog boxes. It's here. Advanced. Now, there's a thing most American boys and girls growing up. How deep is the hole, Joe? How deep is the cave, man, Nancy? No, we, we don't have that. We have lower Z limit, limit Z, minimum Z. Turns out after a lot of playing, you got to go here. And then I let me I think I'm going to do it wrong. You say, OK, minimum Z, a tenth of an inch. What I'm not doing now is saying stop the thing before it even hits the part. And you say preview and they disappear completely. And then see, now you go in advance and click on it. It won't open. You got to go tools and open it up Then go back to advance and say, oh, yeah, it was minus Z. That's what kept it. Now it's kind of acting the way I want. But it's still, if you do do tools, you can see, well, no, it's not really not deep enough, right? You'd get that little, it'd help, but you really want this kind of down. And after tons of tedium, I learned two tenths preview. Now go to tool, and you can see right about there, okay, it's not coming down, so it touches the shank, which is what's getting, it'll probably work. But I've learned if it says it crashed, go figure it out and stop it from doing it. Because if you find a problem, fix it. Manny Reale Vasquez taught me that in Silicon Valley 30 years ago. And boy, was he right. Don't close this here. Be sure to say OK and not close it with the square like I was starting to do. OK. <clears throat> now, I think we're going to be all right with this. Now go back to simulate toolpath. Just do it. It ended. See, now it's OK. No crashes. So that's what it took to 
get a five holes in. A little more involved than I'd want. But why are they putting a metric part in there? They should be. They're smart enough. See this? The program, machining is sophisticated, but it doesn't have to be so complex. The part, oops, say yes, here. The part defines these things as, oh, I got to do something real quick for you before we, before we leave. You can see how they're dotted lines there. That's SOLIDWORKS way when you do the whole wizard. It says, no, no, that's just not just a plain hole. That's a quarter 20 tapped. And, and CAMWORKS is smart to say, oh, I'm going to pick that information up and I'm going to do a center drill, drill, tap. I can't do any of this. I got to route this out and I got to tap it by hand, but that's okay. Let's go back to simulate toolpath, do it to the end. See, because down here we just go to the end so you don't have to wait and watch it do its magic. Now, here, the other mystery thing that they don't make clear that screws everybody up. Show difference. You might think you're okay, but you're not. Here, I can why this thing, hourglass, and then this keeps disappearing on me. And see, it's doing stuff. If it's green, it's at design intent, zero deviation from the model. If it's blue, it didn't get cut. And that's why you see we haven't done the perimeter yet. That's next video. We haven't done this multi-surface thing, two and a half D, but you're, you can go ball mill over this and get it done. If it's red, it, if it's red, it means it's gouged or cut. And when, when we started this, we, there was a little gouge up here, you know, in the first episode. So here you'll notice, let's do it from the bottom. I think it'll be clear. See how that's colored? Red? It's not green. That tells you it's gouged. Well, that's not a problem. That's because the, well, we turn that off. You see how this tap, they model the tap by the outside of the threads. They model the whole tapped hole, not by that, because it wouldn't really be right. They model the hole by the, the, the inside of the threads, the inner diameter of the threads. So the red there is not to be concerned, but always watch these collisions. This is your death smash tools, cut fingers off. This is the, oh, really show me what's going on. Okay. So that's that for today. I'm not sure how we're doing for time because I had to stop everything, go figure out what went wrong with those holes, redo it. Then it worked. It's a mystery. All right. That's doing the holes. Next time we'll come back and, and certainly do the perimeter and maybe even have time to do this. Uh, I call it 3D, but this surface, multi-surface feature is what CamWorks has decided to call it. Uh, until then, good luck with your CAM projects. And I'll put these part files, the one I started with, file. Oh, we're still in the simulation. You get to learn how all the ways it confuses you. File, save, and, and I'll show you save as. One part will be, it says writable. Look at all the takes I did. So the way I started on the blog page, on the description of the video, it'll be a thing to my, to my web page. And on that page, I'll post these parts so you can download them if you want to play. If you go to the first video, you'll see the way we started, the way Dave made it and sent it to me, as well as the way it ended in that video. In this one, you'll see, this is the way it finished, episode two, and look for writable. Here, writable. That's the way it started. So I'll get those posted for you. Cancel out of this. Meanwhile, good luck with your CAM project projects, and I will see you next time. We'll do some more fun with machining. All right? Bye now.